Well, good morning, everyone. And those of you joining us today, I'd like to thank you very much for your interest in the um, Arts and Humanities Art Gallery. And today's webinar is to talk about the gallery resources, to show you a live application and submission and um, answer any questions you may have. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we will begin. And um, our next person, we're going to introduce ourselves and members of the jury. So I am Stacy Shacoin. I am representing the Southwest, I am the chair. And before I became a member of the Arts and Humanities jury, I entered, took some photography classes in college, had a lot of interest in photography and entered some of my art in the gallery. And since being on the jury, I um, kind of help a lot with looking at the elements of photography. Next. Okay, and I am Carol Ann Casey, and I am from the Southeast region, from sunny South Florida down in the Miami Fort Lauderdale area. And for all of you that are having your winter weather, we are having our winter weather too. And the temperature right now is 71 degrees. So <laughs> I have my sweater on today. And as far as my area of expertise, I am the one that's the music and performing arts person. And it, it has been fantastic being able to serve on this um, jury. And even though my expertise is in the music and performing arts, we, um, all of us have great love and semi expertise in the different areas. And this is what makes it so much fun when we get to start judging. And next I think is Irene. Hey, good morning. Uh, my name is Irene Mascali. I represent the Northeast section. I am a member of uh, the New Jersey organization of Delta Kappa Gamma, but I live in Delaware. So our, our closest are very, our, our, our states are very close. So I was able to commute for all those years uh, back to New Jersey. Um, my expertise would, would fall into studio, uh, graphics and photography. I, those are what I taught when I was an educator. And uh, I do a lot of watercolor, but I also love to build. You know, it's always that studio major that I go back to. So uh, this has been an absolute delight, just seeing all the wonderful work that we see. I mean, we're all pinching ourselves all the time because uh, the work that comes uh, through our screens is just breathtaking. So we thank you and encourage you to keep uh, inviting people. It's been exciting to see it grow. So thank you. And good morning, everyone. My name is Roxanne Lagard. I represent the Southeast as well from the great state of Louisiana, which is where our convention will be this summer. We hope everyone can join us there. We're excited about that. Um, I, I want to ditto what Irene just said, that just really been a thrill to be on the committee and uh, seeing all the art that has come through, whether it's literary, whether it's sculpture, whether it's photography or the visual arts, it's been just phenomenal. And I really enjoy the process and being on the committee. Uh, my expertise, I've been, I've been a language arts teacher, so I'm really in the language arts, but I also have a uh, minor in fine arts from uh, college and uh, just have been always interested in the arts. And so it's been a pleasure to be serving on this committee. So we wanna welcome everybody this morning. We also have two other members of our committee that I'd like to just introduce to you. You can see that their, their photographs are there, but we are just honored to have Becky Sadowski, our uh, international president. She's at every meeting that we have, every Zoom that we have, she's there, she gives us input and we really enjoy her being on our committee. And also we have to say a welcome to Victor. Victor Trisnati, Victor, is our uh, DKG support staff from the main office. And Victor just is incredible. He's also on every Zoom and a big part of our committee and the technology that goes with it. So we want to, you know, just say thank you for Victor being with us this morning. You may not see his face, but he's there with us as well. <laughs> he's hiding underneath that strip. Yeah, yeah. So that's our committee. That's who we are. 
Um, we have a couple of slides this morning that we wanted to share with you just to kind of kickstart our webinar this morning to really show you some of the exciting work that we have come to see in the gallery with the submission process. We call them wow. When we see a wow, it is wonderful. It's outstanding. It followed the rubric. It is just the minute you click on it, you say that is something. And the talent just shines through for the artist. And this, this uh, slide just gives you really a cross section of photography, of uh, 3D art with the mutton uh, picture. We also have just the watercolor, just the wonderful mm -hmm. tribal spirit. And then we have a watercolor to the top. And then at the bottom, you see again, we have photography. Uh, I believe it's, it's a watercolor or 2D yeah. art. It's beautiful work. So we wanted you to see what is really uh, some of the pieces that are in our gallery that are really the wow that we see. Irene. Okay, I was gonna say, I just wouldn't want to interrupt. Uh, what makes a wow artist? Um, I think uh, if, we, if we really take a look at the work, it, it has a lot to do with um, not necessarily the subject, but the execution, the use of the material, and also how well it's photographed. Cropping in tight. Uh, what you may have something in front of you, what I would suggest is you take a little cropper. I used to tell the students, take your phone and hover over the work. Sometimes if you can pick up an element, a smaller element of it, it may make it a little more abstract because then it's focusing mostly on the shape. But if when you look at all of these, they're, they're cropped in tight, the subject is clearly shown. And, um, and of course, uh, the pop of the colors or the subtlety of the colors, it depends on the subject matter. Mm -hmm. But they all have that in common. And honestly, it all starts with a sharp, clear photograph. Um, so going back to that rubric, um, making sure that, that there's no, no border on it, uh, no frames. And, and also making sure, uh, and it wouldn't hurt to, when you take the picture, bring it up, get a good look at it, that it's sharp, it's clear, it's bright, there's no shadows. Um, that makes a huge difference. Thank you, Roxanne and Irene. So now what we'll do is we'll go through and show you some of the helpful documents that are on our website. I just wanted to show you um, members, um, people who visit the DKG.org website that are non-members are able to look at our gallery, but they're not necessarily, and they're able to look at our submission, but they're not, there's no submission button here and they don't see the submission part. As a member, you do need to log in and I've logged in already this morning to the dkg.org site and our current application is in the rotator, <clears throat> similar to what you saw when you joined us today. So I'm gonna go ahead and click these arrows to get to the, all the things that are going on. So here is our call for artists, our open January 15th. And so when you click on that, it goes to our submission page for the art gallery. And along the top, we have rubrics, helpful docs, and our webinar link is here. And we will move the webinar recording to our helpful documents when we're done. So here we have our helpful documents. At the, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna go around in the jury and kind of talk about these real quickly. The first one is the submission procedures. And this one, this document is important. And we really hope that you look at this before you um, submit your art. And we at the top, it talks about the minimum maximum requirements for, for the video call, the videos, the photography. Um, we are now accepting, um, writing in language other than English with an English translation. And we, we're also asking that um, you pay attention to the, submit, the submissions need to be, that are accepted should not violate the inclusivity clause of the society. And lastly, here is the first, um, when you title your artwork, your writing, and you have the title, first last name, and your state organization geographically. So as you go down this submission, um, procedures document, we have all of our categories, the literary efforts, 
with individual descriptions of all the subcategories. And um, we have performance arts, dance, dramatics, filmmaking, musical, music, original composition. We have our two dimensional arts, acrylic, charcoal, color pencil. And again, each has their own description. Graphite arts, mixed media, oil, pastels, pen and ink, printmaking, watercolor. And then we go to our three-dimensional arts, basketry, ceramics, inst installation, jewelry, pottery, quilts, um, sculpture, textiles, and wood carvings. And finally, we have photography, black and white, and color. So um, please do take a moment before you submit and go ahead and look at those, those items. Um, next, we have steps to submit. And um, this is just a real quick overview of the steps that you're gonna take. And we'll be actually showing those steps today. It's taken a while to, to load. So it shows our submission periods, the website, um, the website and then how to find the document. If right now it's really easy that it's on the rotator. Next we have submitting art using the Google form. <clears throat> this is an old video from about four years ago that shows the basics of submitting the um, form. But today you're gonna see the updated form, the updated procedures, and we'll be replacing the webinar hopefully here. If you don't have a Google account, there's also, um, a short video, how to register your Google account. It can be an AOL account, an MSN account, a Hotmail account. You don't have to open a Gmail account, but it does show you how to register it as a Gmail. Okay, next. All right, next up is our uh, uploading to the YouTube. Uh, if you wanna click into that, just so they can see. Basically, if you have a video that you'd like to upload, this is a great format that gives you step-by-step -step how to do it. There's also a little tutorial video that you can play. You can see it there, right there. And it shows you, I mean, step-by-step -step how to upload the video. If, and if you have a video, that would be in the performance art, that might be mm -hmm. a, a musical composition, things like that, where we would need you to upload that video. Thank you. Next, there's uh, do's and don'ts for submitting. So now remember when, when we look at your work, we are looking at uh, the rubrics also. I mean, that's, that's what we're basing everything on. So the first thing we look at is to make sure that you're following those guidelines. So your, your title and the author's name on page one. Um, original photographs or graphics, uh, literary efforts. Um, if it's something that we've seen before and oddly enough, uh, I can't say that's happened here, but it's one of those things where it must be your work. It must be original work. Um, that unfortunately falls into plagiarism if, if it's not. And, um, and that it's not an area we want to even go toward. So uh, Stacy, slide two, please. These are some excellent examples of, of uh, what we're looking at. And uh, I believe Stacy was kind enough to uh, take these pictures for us. The, the part is to showcase your work. So it's eliminating all those other distractions. So if you look at the necklace on the left, it's photographed against a, a clean, neutral backdrop. Uh, if you're putting it against something which, which may look pretty when you're displaying it, but unfortunately it doesn't always come through in the photograph. <clears throat> so please, please, please keep your backgrounds neutral. Uh, next, thank you. The quilts, uh, they have been absolutely amazing. Uh, we, we've been uh, chatting about them all the time because they, they're just, they're brilliant. But again, getting a clean shot of it. And that seems to be what's stumping some people. Uh, if you can go over the front, take a, a great shot of this face down, because if we're looking at it draped over something, again, the backdrop has a tendency to overpower the actual piece itself. And when we ask for uh, multiple views of it, if the, 
back of your work is in, in the illustration, if, it, if it's just a, a plain black, maybe hover in tight to one of the, or, or get a, a slight angle because some of them are dimensional, which is pretty neat uh, where we've had people illustrate that to us. So if you can get another fun, uh, interesting, that'll let us get in tight and see uh, what your work looks like. Um, next, please. Uh, looking at pottery, uh, it's the same thing. When you have dimensional pieces, uh, give us uh, the angles of it. What, what does it look like from the top? Because if we're just seeing it from here, we're not seeing all that wonderful uh, beauty that's inside of it. And especially if you look at the next one, the, the exterior of it, the bottom is just as gorgeous. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, jewelry, photographing it from the front, getting it from the side gives us the dimensional aspects of the piece and the width and the weight of it. Uh, next one. Ah, two-dimensional art. And, and this one, it, it's getting rid of the frames, mainly. Make sure there's, there's no um, frames or mats coming in tight to your work and also coming in right above it. Uh, I used to take my pieces outside uh, when I was getting natural light is always the best because unfortunately, uh, light above, uh, unnatural light can cause some shadows. <clears throat> so directly above and shooting straight down, not, not tilting your camera, but literally holding it right above. And you may have to adjust yourself depending on the sun if you're going outside to do it. Uh, next piece. Again, hovering directly over your work. And, and no mats. Uh, occasionally it'll slip through, but please, please, please crop directly on your work and straight above. Next slide. These are excellent examples. In this particular case, not only is it the cropping factor, but it looks like we're, we're catching a little bit of a reflection. So make sure that Take your work out of the glass, if possible, because it, you're, you're, you're almost the, even if it's a, a, a non-reflective glass, you're going to catch some kind of a glare. So it must be removed uh, from the framing. Next, please. Uh, next one, Stacy. Oh, sorry, that's it. That's oh, all. Okay. Great. We're good. Thank, Thank you. you for doing all those. They're beautiful. And next, Carol Ann. Okay, the next two things that we're going to be showing you are going to be brand new with this submission. Um, with legal problems that we have to put up with nowadays to play safe for you and for some of the um, people that you might have in photos or in videos, we're going to be starting to have these photo and video release forms for you. The first one that we're looking at is the photo release for um, our photography. If you have a person in it, because up to now, we've had mostly um, landscapes and animals and pictures of structures. Um, but now we're getting more um, photos with people in them. And we need to have their permission to be shown. So if you look at it, it, um, it shows you right here, it gives your name, if it's a child, so forth, and signatures. And this needs to be submitted when you um, submit your um, photo. And then for the other one, the video release, this is for videos. <laughs> And it has, um, it has up at the top, three different places that you can initial depending on what, I mean, the person that's in the video. They um, have the three areas to give permission for. So they just initial the ones that they, they give permission for. And hopefully it'll be all three, but, um, We'll see. 
and then down below, it just has the information that they need to fill out. Thank you, Carolyn. Okay, going back to um, the submission page, up at the very, very top, there's a very important area called rubrics. I'm gonna click on rubrics and have um, Roxanne and Irene talk about sure. rubrics. Thank you, Stacy. Um, the rubrics are really critical because what you wanna do as once you've decided on the artwork that you wanna submit, you really want to look at the rubrics to see how your work is going to be scored and what qualities and criteria we're looking for in the piece. So if you want to go to um, the visual, Stacy, and click on one of the rubrics, we're not going to go through each one, but uh, we want to show you how you can find them. So if I look at visual, I see photography is first. I, I believe that what's really important is for you to look at the criteria section right there. You can see it because on the photography, it gives you the sizes, it gives you the maximum um, uh, uh, capacity for the, uh, the kilobytes and things like that. And then it also gives you the theme, how the title is related to the theme, thinking about the title of your artwork or your photography, and then making sure that it relates back to, uh, back to the piece. And you can see that in this one, we've got the theme, the composition and the technique and it, we tally them up from the scores and come up with a certain score that each piece is, is, is judged on. So that's photography. If she goes back, you'll see that the next one. No, okay. Excuse me, I lost my place. Let me go back. It's all right. <laughs> it didn't open in a new window. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. And I think where Roxanne is is saying with with all of these, and and she's uh, she's emphasizing is which is so important. But the elements and principles of art are what they are. When we look at the rubric, um, we're also looking at the title of your work. Right. Mm -hmm. If we're left guessing, and that's why it's so important to to have a solid title and to have a, a good description, because we do look at those. Uh, that mm -hmm. sets us up before we even set look at the rubric. But right. the elements and principles are what they are. It has nothing to do with opinion. It has everything to do with that rubric that's in front of us. So uh, holding tight to that, and it maybe wouldn't even hurt to get a second opinion. Uh, have someone else look at it and read your description, look at your work and say, what do you think? Does this make sense? You know, sometimes things are so clear to us that we're blinded. So have an objective person possibly even look at your piece. It, it may be very helpful. So thank right. you. Yeah. Good, 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 good. For sure. Um, I, on, we were just looking at the essay and what came to mind for me was between the essay, the short story, the poetry, we want everyone to pay very close attention to the word maximum counts. Those are places at some time uh, is is not done correctly. And so unfortunately, we hate to disqualify anyone, but right. we have to go, Irene said, we're looking at the rubric. That's what we are going by. And so we want you to really look at that criteria section because it gives you some clues as to what is, you know, one of the first things that, that we're looking at too. Right. And as um, Stacy was mentioning earlier, when it cut for all the literary things, mm -hmm. you have to have title and your name on that first page. Because mm -hmm. we've had problems where we've had to um, disqualify mm -hmm. because there wasn't any title or name around. Right. right. And this is a point where I've even said to my students, whether you're entering a contest whether you're, you're uh, going for a portfolio review, um, as a judge, we, we, put all the, we would put all the work out. The ones that didn't follow the criteria, no matter how good they were, bang, they're right. out. Yeah. So you must go back to that rubric. And remember, it has nothing to do with, with like or dislike. 
because there's times it's killed us. We can all say yeah. that we're looking at something and we're saying it's, it's missing a title or they didn't follow the rubric and it, it, it's, it's a difficult place to be in. So please go back to that rubric. Well, you know, it makes me think it's almost like you're starting with the end in mind. You've mm -hmm. got to go back and you've got to look at everything that are the parameters of your piece of work, whatever it is that you're submitting. Absolutely. Thank you, ladies, for covering rubrics so well. Appreciate it. Because you're right, we definitely do look at those rubrics to decide if um, if they're not if they're going to go forward in the judging or not. And if, they, if those right. requirements have not been met, then we go on. All right. So um, next thing that we're going to do is actually submit a, I am going to go ahead and submit some artwork. And what you've all been waiting for, our new submission. So this is the gallery submission form for January 15th to February 15th. If you do have any questions, there's an email here. Um, myself as the jury chair will help with any issues you might have. And i um, been doing this about four years now, so I've been um, able to help everyone who asks for help. So please don't hesitate to email. Uh, at the top of the form, it also talks about, please review those from all the, the things that we just showed you. All the, and then before you begin, we really want you to take a moment and rename your files before submitting with title, first, last name. So I'm going to kind of show you that. On my desktop here, I have a folder that says art for submission. And I have different pieces here. This, this one right here, um, Chief BB um, Chief BB, uh, BB Springs, it only has the title and SC. So what I would need to do is rename that, similar to how I've done this one, on inside a flower. I have inside a sunflower dash, Stacey Chacoin dash California was the naming criteria that we would like to have. Um, so on this one, to rename it, I just right click, rename, go ahead and add my name. And please, again, do this before you go to submit. And your state organization, please spell it out completely, no abbreviations. I also want to just show before um, I start the submission form is how to check your um, memory requirements. Our form has a... Um, maximum of 10 megabytes and a minimum of 250. Now it will let you submit something smaller, but then it's hard to judge if it's too small. So on this sunflower, you can see it's 4.1 megabytes. And when it's opened up, it looks clear and focused and it looks nice size. This is about the size the jury will see when we go to judge things. On this one, I've got the precarious perch and on this picture, again, the properties shows me that it's 4.9 megabytes. This one, somehow, is so small, it's like a thumbnail. And so if I click on that one, click over here, and look at the properties, it's only 83. And we want at least 250 KBs. So this one, when you look at it, see how small it is? We can't judge mm -hmm. something small. So I wanted to take a moment to share that. Yeah. Any anything anyone would like to add? Okay. No, that that was a biggie. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Right. We right. close all these windows again. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for doing that because we've yeah. had some beautiful um, photos that were submitted just too small that we couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here it does talk about the 250 to 10 megabytes and, and files larger than 10 will not attach. I had someone contact me and they couldn't attach their photo because it was 12 megabytes. They had quite the camera. I was jealous, <laughs> but it was pretty, pretty large in pixels. And so here it has some of the reminders. So we first start off by um, adding your email. I'm just going to do this like I am entering today and it reminds you to look at the rubrics look at the make sure that the submission is inclusive check that your all your contact information is correct when you are done so i check my name is spelled correctly my last name is spelled correctly my phone number um 
I'm going to make up one. There we go. <laughs> okay. My chapter name, my state organization. So I'm from California. I'm not going to put Cali or CA. I'm going to spell it out completely. And then my first, come to my first submission, I am going to submit some photography. My subcategory is color photography. So then um, the first one I'm going to enter, oh, I forgot my name. What did I name it? Let me go back and look. <laughs> I'm gonna do inside the sunflower. So I'm gonna go back to the form and put, um, oh, no, I'm not in our multimedia, it's just one category. Multimedia would be something, and if you don't have it, you just put NA. I don't have multimedia, so I do need to type MA and NA. And so inside the sunflower. And um, uh, this photo, this photo um, highlights. Um, beautiful, ah, <laughs> sometimes my spelling, highlights the inside and the star-like quality of the famous. All right. And any science teachers, if I'm wrong with the part, forgive me. <laughs> and then um, this is where I'm going to go add a file. And when I click on add a file, it says you can drag here or select from your device, similar to how you attach an email. So I'm going to go ahead and select files from my device. I have it on my desktop. I'm going to open my folder where it is, click open. And since, and I'm going to see it has the name inside the sunflower, Stacey mm -hmm. Chaplin, California, and then I'm going to upload it. Doesn't take too long. And what's really nice is it'll even um, show you that it's an image and that it's attached. If it's a three-dimensional, a quilt, jewelry, pottery, make sure you have a second view. And your YouTube links go here if you're doing performance arts. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if I, had a per if I had a picture of a little child, my grandson, or if I had a picture of some strangers, that I didn't know, I would need to go up and ask them, can I get your permission to enter this into art photography or into a, a juried competition? And then, and then I would have the form, have them fill it out or get their contact information and email it to them later. Um, but this is for those instances when it's when people that you don't know or non-members are in it. And um, let's see. Okay, so that would be where you would attach the file. Up at the top, going back to that release form, there's the photo release link and the video release link. You would need to print those out and then go ahead and take a picture, JPEG, scan them, put them. You would attach them just like the image I just attached. Okay, going on to submission two. I'm sorry, I don't have other... Um, things other than photography to upload, but I'm gonna go ahead and if I'm not entering a second item, I put not entering a second item. If I'm gonna go ahead and do photography again, I would click here. Some people do poetry and art. Some people do performance and um, another selection of art. So, or two different types of writing styles. So um, you're welcome to be a, a creative, use the same category or not. So I'm going to go ahead and do color photography again. And again, this has a little asterisk here. So that means I do need to answer it, even though I'm not doing it, not applicable. And title of my work, um, I'm going to put, uh, let's see, this time I think I'm going to enter my little precarious perch. And this is just a little trick because sometimes I don't type well. <laughs> I'm, gonna re, I'm gonna go rename and copy that. And then, where am I at? Go back here, there we go. So my title is Precarious Perch. Oh, and I have it spelled wrong. Uh-oh, that was a big catch. So I'm gonna go back here and rename this. Oh, and I also know, noticed I didn't have the rest of my, my name on there. So I'm gonna right. Good job. 
And I'm going to add California. Thank you. I just noticed, oh, I don't have it completely renamed yet. All right. And I keep opening the wrong. Okay, so then here I have precarious perch. It is um, loved the reflection in the water of this waterfowl. Okay, and then so then I'm going to add. Go to my, select my files from my device and then make sure I have the correct one. Again, it uploads and it even shows me the amount of memory right here, 4.9 megabytes. So if you are uploading and it's less than 250, you've got to do something to increase the pixels on that. Mm -hmm. And then I have, then you look at the permission and copyright notice, um, realizing that we're going to Possibly have, we'll have, if you're accepted to the um, gallery, your artwork will be on the gallery. It might be in our blog. It might be in the collegial exchange. I know we put some in a recent article we did. Mm -hmm. so the artists are using not just the gallery, but other places as well. And so then I'm going to say yes. And then it says you can edit this form, but you cannot edit your attachments. So make sure that those attachments are the ones you want. They're the right size and everything. And you can kind of go back and look at the form, make sure it's tight. You can go to the very top, make sure you have your name spelled correctly, your contact phone numbers correctly, just kind of review everything is answered. <clears throat> if you do forget to add, ask to answer something, you will, you will um, find out. So subcategory color photography, and I have everything as I want it to be. And then I hit submit. Now, after I submit, I'm going to receive an email. And sometimes you're going to be asked to pick the, the CAPTCHA to make sure you're not a robot. Okay, and then your response has been recorded. Here's where you can go in and say, oh, I think I want to use a different phone number. You can click on the edit response and you can go back in and I can change that phone number to a different one that I want to use. Or I decide I want to use a different name or have my name different or something like that. So you can go ahead and then just change what you want, except for the attachments, like I said. So that is show, showing you everything. And so we'll go on and see if you have any questions. Let me go back to the slide presentation. If you do have any questions, please go ahead and um, enter them into the chat. And Carol Ann. Okay. At this point, do we have any questions? <laughs> and because I think in the chat, I think those were just hellos. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. We just dazzled you all, right? That's it. <laughs> Well, Stacy did such a good job with That's that. It. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's go on then. And um, one thing that we had talked about in the submission form was about the blog. And a lot of you have already um, found out about the blog and gone and visited it. And we have had some fantastic artists highlighted in it. And if you have not had a chance to visit it, you need to. And um, with the blog, the highlighting, we've gone and asked the different artists different questions about how they did their artwork and what inspired them. And it's very informative. Um, do any of the rest of you have any little comments you want to make about the blog? We, as you see, it's published twice a month. On the 15th and the 30th, we have new um, presentations. Sometimes they're 
highlighted artist. Other times it's just um, information that we want to share with you. We have a few questions. Yeah, we do. Um, the first one up says, how can I change a submission after being submitted? So um, as I was showing, you can go ahead and go back to that, click on this, um, the form like you're going to fill it out again. And, it, and the computer should remember if you're logged into the same account, it will remember and you can edit the response, but you can't change your photos or your images or your writing. Um, if you do have an issue, you can email me and sometimes I can go into the form and change it for you. So if you do have a problem with your submission, email me and I'll work with you. And my email is at the top of that form. And the next one says um, from Rita Odom, can I get a copy of the rubric if your submission was not accepted so improvements can be made? Carol Ann. Well, with that, they still can go in on our website and go to the rubrics and um, open that up and see what the different criteria are. I think what Rita might be asking, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Rita. Um, I think she's asking if we if if we could give her the reasons why uh, it was not accepted, and we can't coach, um, so we we don't even uh, share that information uh, with each other. You know, when we're looking at scores, we're looking at scores. Um, but Stacy, maybe you can um, feed in on this one, please. You have to take the mute off. And I may be wrong in my interpretation of her yeah. question. No, we just have so many. I agree with Irene. We, we just do have so many entries and we are relying on you to look at the rubrics, look at the submission procedures, and we don't return rubric scores to individual artists. Um, so yes, so that so we don't do that at this time. Yeah. And another thing to look at, not only the rubrics, but go back to the submission information um, mm -hmm. for your specific area. Um, like with the um, literary. OK, if you forget to put the title or your name on it, guess what? we have to throw it out, unfortunately. Uh -huh. And then also go and um, check your grammar, check punctuations to um, spelling and so forth to see if um, you've made some glaring mistakes. And uh -huh. if so, clean them up and submit next time. Yes, I'd like to add to to Rita's question. Um, we don't share the rubrics, but I ha I have, and I'm sure some of the other jurists have as well. Yeah. Had um, had applicants respond to my non acceptance letter and ask, "Is there something that I can improve on?" or those type of things. Yeah. And of course, we always refer back to look at your rubric, see what's going on. But then there's some that were glaring. I like they were framed. So we can, I know I've gone back and said, go back and look because you framed it. And that was one of the criteria that you could not have a frame around your art. So right. in, in that sense, we do respond. It isn't that we don't respond if you had a question. We do respond to those that ask things like that. The next one says, will this webinar be available throughout the art entry period? Um, from, from what we understand with um, Victor, he's going to do whatever processing and so forth, and then put it up on our website, correct? Yes, under, yeah. our, yes, under our helpful documents, it will replace the current video that's there. So you can go back and look at the steps again. And 
Rita has asked, do titles so, need to be translated into English if originally in a different language? No, I would, if we, since we are allowing um, entries in other languages, go ahead and have your title in the language that you're submitting your main writing piece in, just have a translation that we can look at. So we're excited about offering that opportunity. Mm -hmm. and right. Peggy has asked, would you review the photo specifics required for photographing, photographing, I'm sorry, quilts and jewelry? Okay. So I would just go ahead and go back to the helpful documents and look at the do's and don'ts. It's also on our blog and just um, look at those again. I can show you where they are again. And I did also, is there any other questions? Um, Rita said that. Okay. Uh, there is one uh, from Joanne Finney. I'm sorry, Joe Finney. Uh, which category will abstract creations fit in that are made out of food? Um, Does that be mixed? Sounds like if it's a that would be 3D. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I was going to say if it's a and maybe sculpture or something. Yeah, I would say that that it's a 3D, 3D dimensional. But even if it's photographed as a 2D, it's still because it was an assemblage. I think that would. Oh, it's a photo. And yeah, yeah, if you it. take one photo of the artwork, and that would be a 2D entry. If you have a photo from the side and from if you have two photos of that food, that would be a 3D. So okay. it depends on how you photograph it. And how best it's, you want to represent it. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. And it's, are you submitting it as uh, a 3D, 3D piece of artwork or are you submitting it as a photo, as, mm -hmm. you know, photography? But if it's a 3D artwork, like they said, the two different views mm -hmm. and probably under sculpture. I want to go back real quickly because I forgot two things. Sorry, ladies. I want to go back to my um, my email uh, that I received after I submitted my entry. So what you will find when you're done submitting, um, I, I have actually two. Remember the first time I had one phone number? So this is what your response right going to look like. Thank you for filling out the gallery submission. And it's going to have all of the details and that you filled out. It'll show you what your attachments were. And so everything will kind of be there so you can see how you filled it out. When I went back the second time and I changed my phone number and I edited, I got another one saying thank you for filling it out. And this time it had the updated phone number. So that that shows um, wanted to show you what that email looks like that you're going to get. If you don't have it in your inbox, please do remember to check your spam or junk mail folder. In Google, I don't have one. I have everything come to my inbox. So um, that's, that's what that looks like. So we'll go back to the presentation. And it's right here. And we have some announcements. Yes. Um, before we move on, I think we had two more questions. Oh, Stacey. Okay. sorry. Thank right. you. We had a Did we had one up? from Helen and one from Peggy. Okay. Let me go back to them uh, for the chat. Yeah. Good Let's news. see. Helen asked, "Can improv improvisations or arrangements of a particular piece of music be entered as an original composition?" since it would be an original arrangement of a piece. Let me my, read that again. Yeah, my question would be, <clears throat> is it written by someone else? Because again, we need to have original music. Even if you arrange it, right. it still was written by someone else. So right. one of the criteria is it does need to be original music. It needs to be, we need to have the sheet music for it attached as well as the video of the performance. Video. Right, right. Uh, and from Peggy Chambers, when you have a multimedia entry, will it be exhibited under which category, for example, photography and essay, if it's multimedia? Um, that's a great question. And I know Sarah at the 
in her, at the office. She's the one that does it. Usually she puts it under multimedia. So I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. I can't answer that right now. And, okay. but, but you can look, that's a, that would be double work for her. I think she probably would go by the main category or have a multimedia category. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions before we move on? Yeah. Thank you so much for your questions. Those were great. They Good are, conversation. Are. Good conversation. Let me close out of that. All right. Um, are we ready to move on to the exciting announcement? <laughs> yes. Well, there we there go. We go. Yes. There we go. Uh, we want. We are really excited about this piece too. If you were able to uh, attend the Portland International Conference this past summer, you may have seen the art gallery that members were able to submit artwork. There was an application process. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't think there was an application process. Was there, Stacy, for that yes, one? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. there was. There was an application process, and members were able to bring their work. Whether you had submitted in the gallery or not, it was just member a member art gallery, and it was very well received. So we are excited uh, about having that same opportunity for our international convention this summer in July in New Orleans, Louisiana, and we are encouraging everyone to bring their art if you would like to do that. And we, I'm sure, going to have just so many talented um, submissions for that. There will be a process. We're hoping to get that out in February with a May 1st deadline to uh, make an application to be a, a part of the art gallery. So we're excited about that. Yes, and oh, I sure hope a lot of you submit because it's wonderful just to walk around and see the talent. Mm -hmm. And just a couple of things to add on to that. Um, artists will be allowed one item Yes. And they'll find the application under the events page on the website and the New Orleans Convention page. Yes. Right. And also, if you want to be able to sell your oh, yeah. piece of artwork, yeah. that <laughs> on the submission form, there will be information about what you need to do for that to click on. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Those were two good points. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. And then, as you see on that frame, Arts and Humanities Jury, what's hidden there? Remember, member application. Mem member application. Sometime this month, very soon, you are going to see on the international website where you can apply for different international committees. And with the Arts and Humanities Jury, we hope some of you will consider applying. Um, we have four members on the jury, but it's a rotation type of thing where two go off and two come on all the time. And as you see, the um, deadline date is May the 1st. So we hope some of you will consider about wanting to apply. One thing you need to remember though, especially all of you that are constantly um, submitting some of your wonderful artwork mm -hmm. while you're on the committee, you will not be able to submit. So that's something to think about, but you have so much talent and expertise that you would be a great asset to our jury to um, help and keeping things going. Okay, thank you, right. Sherman. I did see one more question from yep. about the public domain composers or unknown composers in the public domain, um, and that is a that is a question maybe for the jury to consider if they would accept something like that in the future, but for this submission, it does need to be original music until the jury has a chance to maybe expand that category a little bit. So wow. hopefully that answers your question. Yes. All right, well, we wanna thank you all for coming. Um, 
this was a wonderful opportunity for us to update our, uh, our video and to have questions from a live audience. And we hope that we were helpful and encouraged you to um, enter some of your art or writing or performance. So again, thank you very much. And please email me if you have any questions. And thank you to Roxanne, Irene, Carol, Ann, and thank Vic you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yes. All right. Thank, us thank you so much for joining us. Okay.